Namaste. So this is the video that I hoped I would never have to make. I'm retiring. And the reason I'm retiring is very simple. There are no qualified disciples. There aren't even any unqualified disciples. The condition of society is such that no one can accept instruction. No one wants to surrender. And certainly no one wants to work at spiritual life, at least hard enough to actually get it, uh, successful at it. So rather than go against the stream, I'm going to retire. There's 650 videos on this channel detailing all my teachings. And probably after I leave this body, they'll be discovered and somebody will commercialize them and twist them and distort them and degrade them into something that the public can actually uh, grasp. And in the, in the consequences of that will be, it won't have any effect. <laughs> That's what's happened with every great master's teachings. Certainly Ramana Maharshi, Chandrasekhar Indra Saraswati, Srila Prabhupada, and so on. So, <clears throat> let me tell you about my relationship with my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada. I was on the west coast of the U.S. going to visit each and every guru who came from India to assess their qualifications. At that time, I was a professional musician doing session work on the West Coast. And I was studying Indian music with Ali Akbar Khan. So I was having a problem in my music studies. <laughs> I could never get through the alap, the a-tempo part of the raga, without becoming so overwhelmed by emotion that I would break down and I couldn't continue. So one day, Ali Akbar, we used to call him Khan Saab, took me aside, Khan Saab said, you know, you're not really cut out to be a concert musician. You're too soft-hearted. You won't be able to deal with the competition and the criticism and all of the nonsense that goes along with being on the road and so on. You should be a temple musician, a devotional musician. I said, that's great. I love the idea, but who can teach me that? He said, I have a friend. <laughs> and his friend from childhood days in Kolkata, turned out to be Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada at that time happened to be in San Francisco. So he took me and introduced me to Srila Prabhupada. And as it turns out, I was able to do a very valuable service, which was to introduce them to the Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead had a sound truck that they used for live concerts in the park. So that sound truck became <clears throat> the vehicle for the first San Francisco Rathiatra. Because of this, Prabhupada like, adopted me almost like a son, like a family member. And I certainly had feelings toward him like a father. But I told him, frankly, I can't follow all these rules. <laughs> no smoking, no drinking, no meat eating, no illicit sex. Well, gambling, I never was interested in gambling. So no gambling, that was okay. <clears throat> but all the others were way out of my range. I was attached to being a musician and all the perks that came with it. So he said, oh, that's all right. 
you know, just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so I did. I went on with my life as a musician and I started chanting, going to the temple when, when I could. And after four years, 1971, I finally surrendered. I went to India, I took initiation, and uh, then I had like the run of the temples. I could go anywhere and practically nobody could tell me what to do because I was Prabhupada's son. <laughs> So, of course, the big leaders didn't like this. And uh, they went to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada always said, just leave him alone. Let him do whatever he wants. So what I did was, I joined a traveling bus party. After my initial temple training, I did lots of puja. <clears throat> I joined the Radha Damodar traveling bus party which was at that time led by Vishnu Jana Swami. Vishnu Jana Swami was a monster guitar player. He was the first guitar player, lead guitar player in the Jefferson, at that time, Jefferson Airplane. Huh? Now they're known as Jefferson Starship or some darn thing. Anyway, Jorma Peterson, who, who replaced him, was really like nothing compared to Vishnu Jana. He was an amazing guitar player, better than Jimi Hendrix. But when he became a disciple of Prabhupada, he gave up playing the guitar. He only played devotional instruments from India and he became a master kirtaniya, kirtan leader. And so I learned all of his stuff. I learned his whole set. And I was like the backup kirtan leader that when uh, Vishnu Jan had worn out his voice, which he did on a daily basis, <laughs> he was always kind of hoarse like this, you know, <laughs> because of singing so much. Then I would take over and I would lead the kirtan. And my god brothers treated me like shit. I don't know why, but everybody does. So I guess they're no exception. In fact, everybody kind of just ignored me except for Prabhupada and his sister, Pishima. So I went on like that until Prabhupada left his body in uh, 1978, or 77, I'm sorry. And, uh, and then I went off on my own. And as I've told several times here in, in 1984, I got enlightenment, I got realization, I got nirvana. So since then, I've been trying to teach with zero success. <laughs> and I think the reason for this is that I don't have a sangha, I don't have a group, I don't have a social context. I did for a while, but it failed because no one would follow my instructions. They wanted to follow the, some book. So I made the mistake of introdu introducing them to my guru's books. But you know, when, when Srila Prabhupada was around and we used to try to read his guru's books, he would stop us. He would say, no. Those books aren't for you. Those are my guru's books. You follow my instructions, not his instructions. And it was the same thing when I had some so-called disciples, very insincere and weak disciples. They wouldn't follow my instructions. They wanted to follow Prabhupada's instructions, but Prabhupada's instructions were not for them. I was giving them their instructions, but they didn't want to follow. So they all betrayed me. And since then, I've been trying to teach through this channel as I went and verified my enlightenment by going through the Buddhist path, by going through the tantric path, 
by going through many other paths which you can see on this channel. And I was able to complete all of them successfully. Well, because I was already enlightened. <laughs> but I doubted my enlightenment because I was unable to attract sincere disciples. But now I've come to the conclusion that there are no sincere disciples. What I see here in Tiruvannamalai is that the blind are leading the blind. There are these popular spiritual teachers who are all cut from the same mold, you know? They're tall, good-looking, upper-middle class, entitled, white, privileged, son of a bitches. And they exploit their uh, followers like anything, financially, sexually, morally, emotionally, and spiritually, because they're not enlightened. But people have become so dull, so stupid, they can't detect this. So they fall for the slick line and the pretty face and the beautiful body and the smooth talk. And they pay thousands of dollars for a nonsense teaching that doesn't work. So in this kind of social climate, who can teach the real path? Nobody. And nobody is teaching it except me. I am the world teacher. I inherited that mantle from my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada, who was the world teacher before me. And now nobody wants to come and be a disciple. So fuck you. I'm retiring. I'm going to a small island in the South Pacific that I know, where people are actually nice. Huh? Unlike here in India, what to speak in the West. Oh my God, what's happening in the West is just so horrible. The complete disintegration of the society led by the degradation of women. Now, Bhagavad Gita details this. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, when women are degraded, the whole society goes in the ditch. And that's exactly what's happening. So it's over, people. It's over. You don't have a culture anymore. It's dead. It's finished. It's gone. Huh? That's one of the epithets that we used to use for Prabhupada's organization, ISKCON. Huh? After Prabhupada left, we used to say, it's gone. Or we used to call it the ISK Khan. Huh? A Khan is a shorthand for confidence game. So all the spiritual organizations now are corrupt and degraded, and they're giving false teachings just for money. And they're making a lot of money but they're not bringing anyone to enlightenment. I could bring you to enlightenment if you would surrender to me. But since nobody seems interested in that, what can I do? You know, it's a two-way street. Any relationship is. I would happily give everything to one sincere disciple if that person would just show up, but they haven't. I mean, I'm not going to sacrifice my life for a bunch of people who don't appreciate the teaching. At least Jesus had his 12, you know? At least Al-Mansur had his associates and his teacher. But I don't have any of that. I don't have even one. So my road is clear. My path leads to the highest and so now I'm going to leave and I'm going to leave all these videos with the comments disabled, except for this one. You'll be able to make comments on this video. Of course, I'll moderate them, so no bullshit. And uh, I'm going to wind up my affairs in India and go to this little island 
where I can retire and live in peace for the rest of my days until I go to my reward. Aum Tat Sat. <laughs>